What's happening is that Unite are speaking to local management, presenting their latest thoughts on the situation, and that will then go back to uh, JR, the, the boss of this, Mr. R Mr. Uh, Radcliffe, Jim Radcliffe, the majority shareholder in Ineos, and he will take a view. The view he took yesterday was that the loss-making petrochemical arm of Grangemouth should close, and local managers are saying, well, look, you know, as a matter of courtesy, I suppose we have to listen to the union, but they are making it clear at this stage they see no way back. That's their public position, at least. What Unite will say is effectively, look, um, hands up. We now accept everything you were saying in the first place. We will accept the changes to the terms and conditions, and they hope that that will reverse the closure decision. Politicians are obviously on the case as well. And Energy Secretary Ed Davey is saying he had a 40-minute conversation with Jim Radcliffe yesterday, and that was positive. Alex Salmon, Scotland's First Minister, has also been communicating with management, and he is talking up the prospect of trying to claw back this closure decision. So clearly they're getting something from the company that is positive, gives them grounds for optimism, and possibly that is down to cash. Don't forget that Ineos needs cash, a lot of it, to redevelop this plant, to bring in shale gas from the United States and turn it into what should be a fairly profit profitable operation in the long term. Maybe there's cash on the table from politicians and Unite, you know, essentially uh, agreeing to everything they had disagreed with in the past and maybe on both counts it's something that's attractive to Jim Radcliffe, attractive enough to have reversed this very drastic decision that was made yesterday.